Hello everyone. So today I am here, myself and Dr. Violet, and I'll be discussing about CSI Net Life Science Advanced Immunology, Autoimmunity, and Immunotherapy. So basically, we are going to talk about what is autoimmunity, what causes it, and yes, what is immunotherapy as well. So first, let us start with autoimmunity. So the term autoimmunity it means that our own B cells and T cells that are present in our own body. So these B cells, T cells, they are a part of our adaptive immune system, right? So these B cells and T cells, they are capable of, when a person is suffering with autoimmunity, so they are capable of attacking their own host cells. So usually these cells, they have to attack anything that is foreign, right? But in autoimmunity, they'll attack your own host cells. Though it is your own, but still, it'll identify it as something foreign and will give an immune response against it. So that is what is autoimmunity. So this is an immune reaction that is directed against an individual's own tissue. So because it is directed against your own tissue, so it lead to tissue damage and various diseases it can cause. So what we can say is autoimmune diseases develop when autoreactive B lymphocytes, that is the autoantibody. So B cells will generate antibodies. So these are the autoantibodies. And the T cells or the T lymphocytes will cause pathological or functional damage. It can be to any organ or it can affect uh, any tissue, okay, wherever the antigen is present. So if you see this disease, uh, the figure over here, so you can see B lymphocytes will release antibodies known as autoantibodies. So they will go and bind to the own host tissues. Okay, so where they are going and binding? Definitely to certain proteins that are present. So these are now the antigens. Now what type of antigen it will be? It will be self antigens because it is present in the own host. Right. Similarly, T lymphocytes. Now T lymphocytes are majorly of two types. Okay, T helper, TC. So these TC cells, they attack some virus infected host cells. But in this case, they can attack even a proper or a normal host cell if it, I know, if it identifies it as something foreign. Okay, so it will react with the own self antigens or the self cells, right? So this is in plain terms, what is autoimmunity? Now let us see what are the various autoimmune diseases that can be caused because of this autoimmunity. So the first disease is Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So here you can see some of the diseases. So what is this Hashimoto thyroiditis? So here the thyroid hormone production will slow down because of certain deficiency. Okay, Because the autoantibodies they will go and bind to the enzymes that are present over here that helps in the production of thyroid hormones. So as a result, it will lead to deficiency of thyroid hormones, where the common symptoms the person might suffer may be fatigue, okay, swelling of thyroid gland, weight gain. So all this comes under Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Then next disease is systemic lupus erythematosus. In systemic lupus erythematosus, it is also known as SLE. Okay, so here again what happens, it's an inflammatory disease. Okay, that will attack your own, the B cells, T cells, they attack the own host tissues. So that is systemic lupus erythematosus, where the whole of the body actually gets affected. Okay, because uh, you now it can attack the DNA, histones, RNA. It is the rheumatoid arthritis. So in rheumatoid arthritis, basically the joints get affected. So it is a chronic inflammatory disorder where the joints, it affects all of the joints, including the hands and the feet. So here are certain antibodies. So they will go and bind to the, you know, the autoantibodies will go and bind to the antibodies that are present in these joints. Okay, so that leads to rheumatoid arthritis. Then multiple sclerosis. What is multiple sclerosis? Again, it is an autoimmune disorder where the immune system, your own immune system will damage the protective covering of nerves okay so as a result the nervous system get affected over here so you can see in various diseases the antibodies the t-cells they can affect various parts of the body that leads to various diseases 
similarly in asthma it affects the respiratory tract so person cannot breathe properly okay so basically it affects the lower respiratory tract leading to asthma celiac disease is actually a immune reaction that occurs and uh, the person cannot eat glutton or uh, it's actually a protein that is found in wheat barley and rice so it is in this celiac disease people cannot eat foods that have this glutton okay as i said it's a protein uh, even that can be present in other grain products as well so this when the glutton is in the small intestine so that time the immune system will attack this part of the uh, gastrointestinal tract and that is what leads to inflammation okay that occurs during the celiac disease next is eczema or psoriasis it is also known as so basically eczema is a disorder related to the skin so here the immune system will overreact to very small uh, irritants or you can say any small allergens okay that it can that can be present in the environment so the skin becomes very sensitive so when it comes in contact with any of these triggers any small allergens so the immune system will assume that this small irritant as something no as foreign invader like it can assume it to be a bacteria or a virus so that can harm your body so it will trigger you know the the trigger that is the allergen will activate the body's natural defense system okay so as a result it can lead to inflammation okay so that will be itching in the skin so that is what is eczema clear so these are some of the autoimmune diseases so likewise we have more of it but these are some of the important ones now discussing about the various mechanisms for inducing autoimmune response why autoimmune responses occur in some individuals okay so there are few proposed mechanisms like first mechanism is release of sequestered antigen now when during development our b cells t cells are exposed to various antigens okay the self antigens on the mhc now there is a possibility that some of the antigens might not be presented to the b cells and t cells okay so those are hidden or sequestered antigen now later in life when they come in contact like you know some eye protein present in the corneal protein so it is present in the eye and it was not exposed to these b cells t cells during development so as a result the b cells t cells don't know about this antigen but maybe because of some eye damage the protein went into the blood and that is how it came in contact with this b and t cells so that is when these b cells and t cells will see it as something foreign and give rise to autoimmune responses okay so that is one mechanism second there can be inappropriate mhc expression now usually mhc is expressed only on apcs right the professional apcs but somehow there is inappropriate mhc expression and even the non apcs start expressing it so what will happen they'll also take whatever antigen is present quickly take it process it and present it to t cells so, so as a result the t cells will quickly get activated when that activation was not needed right so that will again cause autoimmune responses then third proposed mechanism is apcs with cross reacting antigen now some antigens okay that are uh, something that is foreign okay so when it enters the body our immune system will give rise to immune responses or b cells t cells will become active so they become active against this incoming antigen but the you now the epitope of the antigen okay the the confirmation might be seen the structure might be seen that is present on your own host tissues okay so as a result now what will happen so these b cells t cells that was generated against this incoming antigen will cross react with the own host tissues so that is another reason that is molecular mimicry because they are so similar okay so that can lead to autoimmune responses because now the b cells t cells will attack your own host tissues and cells right then another major factor can be polyclonal activation usually whenever a pathogen enters so against the particular epitope one particular type of antibodies are generated okay so usually monoclonal antibodies are needed but sometimes if there is a large activation of a large number of b cells okay not one or two maybe a, a large number of b cells get activated so it lead to a large number of antibodies that are released 
then they are all different types so these antibodies will go and bind to different different proteins different host proteins okay so in a way they can damage the own host tissues so that is another reason polyphenol activation that leads to autoimmune responses right so how it can be treated now there are some treatments for autoimmune diseases like t cell vaccination is one of the therapy where uh, because t cells are getting activated so these t cells some of the t cells when you take it and then you know the t cells that are generated against a particular antigen against the host antigen you take it and inject it and use it as a vaccine okay you inject it into the thymus so now the thymus will see it as something own and it will not give rise to immune response so that is t cell vaccination very similar to you know the vaccine then as i said mhc okay so if unnecessary expression of mhc so they can be blo blocked with the help of certain peptide so this is another treatment then monoclonal antibodies so these monoclonal antibodies that are generated against certain receptors okay or against certain antibodies so they'll go and bind to it so as a result the antibodies and the receptors they cannot bind to the own host tissues or own host proteins right so here also if you see il2 toxin okay so to, act, to activate the t cells the il2 receptor should bind to il2 so instead of the il2 going and binding and activating the t cells maybe some il2 toxins can be injected or anti il2 receptors can be injected okay so that will help in not suppressing you know you can say that will help in suppressing the activation of t cells so the t cells will not get activated clear sometimes even oral antigens can induce tolerance because you know depending on which pathway or you can say how the antigen is entering the body okay how the antigen is administered in the body so that can also activate the you know if you give it peritoneally so immediately the t cells b cells get active if you give it orally okay through the mouth so it takes time to get activated so in this way it is found that to treat certain autoimmune diseases if you inject the antigens orally so it can give rise to some tolerance okay so the body will not show immune response against these type of antigens okay when you are administering it orally so that was about autoimmune disease now next topic is immunotherapy so that the term itself what is immunotherapy means our immune system has the ability where it can work to protect the body against any kind of infection illness disease okay it has the ability even though we are infected okay it has the ability to protect us from certain diseases like it can protect us from the development of cancer so that is what is immunotherapy where our immune system has the ability to provide relief against certain diseases clear so now let us see the immunotherapy that is done for autoimmune diseases okay so as i said immunotherapy means your own body cells have the ability now specifically if we talk about autoimmune diseases so usually immunotherapy is against cancer okay but yes you can see like you can engineer the t cells to target specific b cells so there are two mechanisms like car t and car t c a r t so here in the car t cells they are engineered to detect a marker so what is this car t so the full form of this car t is chimeric antigen receptor t cell so it is a therapy wherein no you take your the t cells from the infected individual okay and then you know you can take it out from that infected individual you can do certain changes in the laboratory okay so they are engineered actually okay you do certain changes so you no insert certain genes so in this way you can do certain changes to and later on you can so these cells are engineered in such a way that they can detect a marker that is found on all b cells okay that is they have cd19 as a surface marker so this type of en engineered immune cell has been able to successfully you know wipe out certain blood cancers where you no know, uh, there is too much proliferation of the cells the b cells right so in this way the uh, engineered t cells can attack the b cells and the b cells will be removed right so that is what is car t now c a r t okay so what is this c a r t so it is again 
you will engineer human T cells where they will express a chimeric autoantibody receptor. Okay, so this is chimeric autoantibody receptor. Right? So this chimeric autoantibody receptor will be able to identify the antibodies right so so this is the it is a kind of adapt to adapt the car t approach to treat autoimmunity so this is an approach that is known as chimeric autoantibody receptor right so this approach that is car t it target only those b cells no it is highly specific okay here it is like the all the b cells that express cd19 can be identified but here only those b cells that produce the antibodies that drive an autoimmune condition okay so this is more specific against the b cells that causes autoimmune diseases right so this is how immunotherapy can be used for autoimmune diseases likewise if we talk about the immunotherapy treatments for cancer so there are various immunotherapy treatments like monoclonal antibodies can be used where the immune system can recognize cancer cells where uh, it was not able to previously identify those cancer cells. So these are monoclonal antibodies that will specifically identify the cancer cells. Over 75 drugs are already there. Okay, they are approved to date. Second way is immune checkpoint inhibitors. So in cancer what happens? The cell keeps on proliferating. So there is no controlled uh, division. So to inhibit that, you need to inhibit the checkpoints, okay. So releases, so in immune checkpoint inhibitors that are being used, it will release immune system's molecular breaks called checkpoints. So this will not allow the cell to move from one phase to another. So at least six drugs have been approved so far. Likewise, there are cancer vaccines. So two types are already there, preventive and as well as for treatment. So like you can use artificial intelligence for personalized medicine. So here like each individual's body, their cells, their tissues, everything is studied and accordingly the vaccines are prepared to, you know, to treat against or to prevent certain types of cancers that the person might be more susceptible to. Then the next kind of immunotherapy treatment, it is known as adoptive cell transfer now what is adoptive cell transfer it is actually a type of immunotherapy in which as we saw the t cells okay they are given to a patient to help the body fight against diseases such as cancer okay so adoptive cell transfer will use the t cells now as i said it can be used from the the t cells okay they can be used from the own patient but here in adoptive cell transfer that is in car t they were using from the own patient also Adoptive cell transfer will use T cells from a donor, okay, not necessarily from the patient itself. So from a donor and then certain treatments can be done, okay. So this can be used for some types of cancer and even certain infections, right. So T cell transfer therapy is one type of adapt adoptive cell transfer. So it's a pretty new with only two drugs. So it will use gene editing. Likewise, another immunotherapy treatment is cytokines. Now, cytokines are small molecular weight proteins that are present in the body, naturally present. But man-made versions, like if a person's body is not capable of producing the important cytokines. So in that way, in that case, man-made versions of some proteins will help to boost the immune system. So though it is a little complicated, but yes, it is a kind of an immunotherapy treatment that can be used to treat cancer. So this is just a small overview about immunotherapy and its treatments. So more we will be studying in the upcoming videos. So that's all for today. Thank you.